Welcome to my inspirational webinar on the UK Global Talent Visa in Digital Technologies. Um, today I'll be talking about what is the Global Talent Visa. Quickly, I'll talk about the Stage 1 endorsement application and process. I'll go through the, about the guidelines as well briefly, and then I will introduce you to my special guest, Chinadu Ezi from Nigeria, who will share his story and I'll open up the floor for a Q&A. I will be asking Chinadu some of my own questions, but um, please do pop in the chat or the Q&A um, tab there to ask your own questions and we'll get to that as soon as we finish. So I'll just give you a bit quick brief background about myself if you don't know me. Um, you may have seen me on YouTube. It's a very popular channel at the moment, but um, my name is Michelle Hewer. I'm Australian Vietnamese and I'm a UK Global Talent Visa coach. Um, in 2016, I was a recipient of the Global Talent Visa in Digital Technologies and I got the Exceptional Talent Endorsement. Um, after that, I became the Tech Nation Visa Ambassador because back then, I know it was only five years ago, but no one knew about this visa then. I was one of the top 50 that received it. Um, and it was such a huge accolade because Tech Nation endorsed me with exceptional talent, which meant that in three years I could apply for an indefinite leave to remain, which is like a um, permanent residency, and then went on to get my UK citizenship, all because of the Global Talent Visa. Um, before I got the visa, I was on all these other visas in the UK, which was quite stressful and expensive, and it didn't give me a route to settlement. So this one was perfect for me. Um, I spent seven years in the UK where I um, really drove my startup, which was called Maywick Love, um, and I based myself in Manchester and Newcastle and travelled a lot to London. I was in London like every other every other week, um, and, it, and I immersed myself in the tech ecosystem all in Manchester, London and Newcastle. And they were all very um, different, but the one thing that they had in common was that everyone is so welcoming, inviting, and whatever you put into the tech ecosystem is what you will gain from it. So I gained a lot from it because I was out there doing a lot of stuff. Um, before I quit my job to become a tech entrepreneur, I was a solicitor in Australia. Um, yeah, so quit my six figure salary job to become a tech entrepreneur. Very scary, very risky, but it was a fantastic journey that I went on. Um, how I started to become a Global Talent Visa coach was I actually wrote a blog about my story about how I got it because it was so new. That blog went viral in 2016 and I just kept getting inundated with inquiries um, and then ended up helping people and this is now my full-time job. Um, so I've helped over 500 tech entrepreneurs, senior execs and tech employees and my success rate is now 90%. Um, I have had clients that received a result within three hours to 24 hours which is amazing um, but the usual time is um, they say eight weeks during COVID it's about three to four weeks but you know sometimes clients submit and get a response straight away which is amazing. Um, my clients have included people who work for WhatsApp, Sony, LinkedIn, startups, CTOs, CEOs, UX designers, you see the list. It's I get people from all over the world doing so many different things but even if they do the same thing. Everyone's story is different. And this is why I love what I do. Every client is so different. And I love hearing everyone's stories. And I try to help them articulate their stories, highlight their achievements and impacts and give them the opportunity to put forward a very strong application. Um, just a quick disclaimer, I only help with stage one endorsements. I don't help with the visa process because it's a two stage process. And I'm not affiliated with the Home Office or Tech Nation, other than the fact that I was a recipient and I'm part of the Tech Nation visa alumni. So that's the only way I'm affiliated with them. I've been featured in a lot of um, publications, which is important for when you, if you do apply, you want to go under leadership and show evidence of leadership. So for my startup, again, as I said, I was out there doing a lot of stuff. And these are just some of the things that I've done. I've done a lot more, but you know, you can have a look on my website of what I've done. So I'm really proud of what I've done in the UK and met so many great people along the way and been featured in lots of different publications. And this is the blog that started the, my whole journey. So that's on my website as well. So you can read my story. So these are some of my successful recipients. And these are the ones that want to be um, sort of uh, want to tell their story. I have a lot more, but um, obviously some of them don't want to, to share their story. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, but these are just some of them here um, who've gone on to get their visas. And some live in Manchester, um, Edinburgh, London. Uh, yeah, so mainly London, really. So there's just some of them there. So quickly, what is the Global Talent Visa? Well, it used to be called the Exceptional Talent Visa, and that's what I got. But it's 
the same thing. It was a special visa that was introduced um, to allow highly skilled entrepreneurs and talent working in the digital tech sector the ability to apply for the right to live and work in the UK for up to five years. It's a two-stage process. And the first stage is you have to be endorsed with exceptional talent or exceptional promise by a government organization called Tech Nation. You have to meet the strict criteria that's set by Tech Nation. And, and then once you are endorsed, you can then apply for your visa. Um, you'll see in the criteria which I'll go through, it's, it's not a job application, it's more than a job application. So it's, it's about what you do in your job, but also what else do you do for the UK tech sector. And if you um, Google search hashtag Tech Nation Visa, you'll find a bit more information about this. The reason is because the Global Talent Visa is an umbrella visa. There are different endorsing bodies for different um, specialties. Um, digital technology is one of them. There's the arts, there's fashion, there's architecture, there's research there's science, there's engineering. So they have different endorsing bodies, but what we're interested in today and what I help with is the um, digital technology sector. And that's why Tech Nation is the endorsing body. The, um, the main benefit is that it gives you the freedom and flexibility to live and work in the UK for up to five years. You can apply for indefinitely to remain in British citizenship, which I have. Um, you can bring your dependents with you. You can start your own UK limited company. And this is the main thing which a lot of people love about this visa is you can work for a tech company without them needing to sponsor you. Um, so that, that hurdle is over because a lot of times people want to work, but they get to the interview stage or even just applying to recruiters and you know, they ask, do you have a visa or um, the company don't, won't sponsor you? So, you know, you can't really apply. So this visa is attached to you. You can work for anywhere you want to, um, as long as it's in the digital tech sector and you can leave the company if you don't like it anymore because the visa is with you and you don't have to go home. Um, it is also cost effective in that the application fee for stage one is um, cost effective. Stage two is the visa stage, which is a little bit more because of the immigration health surcharge fee, which is like a medical fee that everyone has to pay. But in, in terms of the stage one endorsement, it's, it's quite cost effective. I've been through a lot of visas and this is one of the cheaper ones. So the real benefits of the visa, once um, a lot of my clients have received it and what I found when I received mine is the real benefit, it gives you credibility because Tech Nation endorses you with exceptional talent or exceptional promise, which means they, they see you as a leader or emerging leader in the tech sector. So already you've got credibility there. It also gives you confidence. You can feel confident to apply for promotions. I know that some of my clients have gone on to get two, three promotions after receiving the, the visa because they don't have to worry about their company, you know, giving them the, the visa and the sponsorship. They've got their own visa. They're more confident because if the company doesn't give them the promotion, they can go work somewhere else. You can also negotiate your pay as well um, because you don't have to worry about them giving you a visa, you've got your own. You get lots more opportunities as well um, because your world has suddenly opened up um, to not being restricted. Um, you also accidentally become a role model for people in your own countries who want to follow your route as well. And that was the reason why I wanted to write the blog when I started because no one really knew about it and I wanted to share my story because if I can do it, Everyone else can as well. You just obviously have to put the work in it. But um, it's just to share my story to say, hey, if you're in this, let's have a think about it because, you know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm exceptionally talented, but you just have to prove that you are. And it gives you the security as well. So some of my clients have gone on now to even looking for houses to buy because they, they know that there is a route to settlement. They know where they're going to be and they know they can stay in the UK for long term. So those are the real benefits that we found after we got the visa. So these are some of the stats. Um, you can see there are people from um, 90 plus countries applying, but these are the ones that are applying more from uh, USA, India, Nigeria, Canada, and Russia. There's a 54% endorsement rate, which means that not everyone who applies will be endorsed. So um, it's one in two. And that's because the criteria is quite strict and you need to fulfill that criteria. Um, and it, you've got to put forward a strong application. Um, there are unlimited endorsements though, but when I applied, we were, there were only 200 endorsements per year, but they got rid of that cap. And now it's, if you do fulfill the criteria, you do have the opportunity to be endorsed. Um, so for me, when I applied, it, you know, I could only be one of 200 in the year that, that would be endorsed. And that was quite stressful, but now there's, there's no cap. Um, over the years, um, there's only been 1,800 successful recipients, but that was also because there was the cap. Um, but hopefully now there's going to be even more because my, my role and my goal is to increase the diversity in the UK tech sector. It really is needed. 
Um, those who get um, talent or promise, it's 68 to 32%. That's just the stats. Um, there's a 75, 25% endorsement rate for male, female, and obviously because tech is a, a male dominated industry. So um, that's why more males are being accepted. But it's not to say that if you're not you know, male, if you're female, you can still apply, but if, if those are just the stats. And if you are endorsed and you get the visa, you join a group called the Technician Visa Alumni, which I'm a part of, and we get together, we meet up every month, um, physically or virtually, and there's, an, there's a whole network in there, so you meet other people. So these are some of the stats from the applications in the last sort of, since 2014. Um, so you can see they have increased over the years. Um, so far, we've got 608 this year, but it starts in April every year. So that's why there's only 600, because it only just started like, you know, six months ago, um, the, the cutoff. So there'll be more, obviously. Um, I applied in 2016, so there weren't many stats there. And as I said, I was only in the top 50, so there weren't many of us applying then. And there have been about three and a half thousand applicants, I think even more now since 2014. Um, so this is just the stats from the report. Um, over to the left, these are stats from countries, applicants from this, those certain types of countries that have been endorsed. So the endorsement rate for each country. Um, unfortunately, Nigeria has a 30% endorsement rate, while China has an 86% endorsement rate. Um, you've got India, Pakistan, hovering around the 40, 40, 50%, which is 54 is the, the endorsement rate. So this is where, you know, I, I hope to increase it for Nigeria. I've got a lot of Nigerian clients and they are getting endorsed. So I'm trying to increase that to make it um, a lot higher. So USA, obviously, they, there's a 74% endorsement rate there. And these are just some of the skills that are being endorsed. Obviously, because it's a tech visa, software engineers obviously apply and they get endorsed. But people with business skills can also be endorsed, like biz dev, you've got marketing, um, UX designers. Um, so they're being endorsed as well. But this is just a stat. If you don't fall in that, doesn't matter. Uh, you can still apply, but I'll go through the skills in a sec. So the process, as I said, there's a stage one and two. The first stage is um, the endorsement stage. The second stage is the home office visa application stage. So once you're endorsed, then you can apply for the visa. Within the first stage, though, there's two steps. Uh, you've got to pay and register at the home office. So that's the £456. That's the application fee. Then you've got 15 days to then upload all your documents onto the Tech Nation portal. Um, very easy to do. Uh, when I applied back then, I had to send my, my thesis uh, by snail mail uh, and by registered post. So I had to do a lot of printing, which was uh, very stressful and hoping that they'd receive it. But now it's all online, which is really easy. And then you have to wait about eight weeks for a response. But as I said, during COVID, it's been about three to four weeks. That's average. Um, and you know, as I said, some of my clients have received a lot quicker, but the average is about three to four weeks. Um, that's when Tech Nation will say that you're successful or unsuccessful. If you are unsuccessful, the good news is you can appeal. And I help a lot of clients with the appeal process as well. I, I get to see what the feedback is from the assessors. And then we see how to strengthen their application. Or if we can say, no, the assessor made a mistake. And these are the reasons why. Because sometimes they do make mistakes. Um, and it goes to another assessor to be assessed. And then they decide, finally, if, are you successful or not successful? And there's a there's a 28-day limit in which to appeal and they come back to you within 28 days. If you are unsuccessful from that second assessor, unfortunately, you might have to um, apply again or go through a different visa route. But if the um, second assessor said, yes, we agree that the first assessor made a mistake, you are endorsed, you can apply for your visa. So that's where this part goes into it. Um, home office visa application, it's all the biometrics and the passport and the checking of the ID, it's the proper visa process. It's £152 for the application fee you also have to pay for biometrics but the immigration health surcharge is that bigger fee that I talked about um, at the moment it's 624 pounds per person um, so if you've got if you're staying for five years because it is a five-year visa or if you want to stay for three years if you've got the exception talent um, it's 624 times however many years and you have to pay that up front in advance and then you wait. Um, certain countries though, um, you need extra tests so like tuberculosis tests and things like that. But for me, I didn't need to. Um, so that is that process there for you. So if this is where to determine whether or not you're eligible and I do um, free discovery calls for eligibility tests. 
Um, you can have a technical or business skill, uh, even though it is a tech visa, they understand that people um, have a business skill, but they also work for uh, tech organizations and they can apply. So you can have a look there. Um, if, it, if yours doesn't really fit, um, we can still try and see if whichever skill is closest because they understand that the tech sector moves so quickly new roles are coming up all the time so it's up to you to state your case and I can help you with that um, but they're very clear about what they don't want or who are not eligible and I get this a lot and it's people who work for outsourcers and consultancies um, so if you work for companies like um, White Pro, Cap Gemini, KPMG, uh, Tata Consultancy, you know, those are like consulting companies that build products for their clients to then sell. Um, they don't want that. So unfortunately, I get a lot of these questions and a lot of people still apply, even though they're a consultant and it comes back unsuccessful. And that's because they don't, they're not looking for, for people who work for consultants. Okay. Um, so, and this is why they made a new definition. And I've been asking for this for many years and they finally explained what um, a, a product-led digital technology company is because they want people who build products, who work for tech organizations building products for those companies. So a product-led digital technology company is those who are defined as a business that provides a proprietary digital technical service product platform hardware as their primary revenue source. So what does that mean? It means that you work for, or you're a founder of a digital tech company that develops its own products for its customers. Um, to license or have a subscription or to sell. They don't want consultancies or outsources because they don't build their own products. And that has to be really clear because if you don't pass this, then unfortunately you can't apply. But if you do, we move on. So as I said, it's like a job application, but it's more than a job application. As you can see, it looks like it. So you have to provide your CV. You have to have a personal statement ex explaining, you know, your background and why you want to go be in the UK and what achievements and impact that you've made to your own sec uh, companies in tech sector. And you need three letters of recommendation by experts in your field. And then you need to provide 10 documents and there's a, a list of criteria which you choose and you have to fulfill in order to then um, be endorsed. Okay, and this is like a PhD of your career. Um, it takes a, quite a bit of time to work through, but um, and that's why I help with and, and it's roughly three pages each. That's the strict limit, which is 15 documents. It's 45 pages that you have to do. It can be overwhelming, but if you work with me, I make it as simple, hopefully, as possible for you. And this is some of the criteria. First of all, you need to determine whether or not you're exceptional talent or exceptional promise. Um, when I applied, they didn't really make this clear, but now they've made it really clear that if you have more than five years experience, you should apply under the the exceptional talent category, because if you're five years into your job, you should show that you have leadership um, skills, that you are a leader. Whereas if you've got less than five years experience, they want to show, they know that you are a, a potential leader or emerging leader in tech. So you would go under the exceptional promise route. If you are more than five years, but you want to go for the exceptional promise route, that's not going to fly. So you're going to have to say, okay, look at it you know, um, objectively, if you ha have got five years, you have to go the talent route. If you've got less than five years, you have to go the promise route. Okay. Um, you have to show that you're a leader or potential leader in your field. And you need to show three examples of these. Um, and that's mandatory. They make that you have to choose this criteria. And, and these are the things like, you know, writing articles or speaking at events or being a judge at competitions or leading or growing any companies, uh, product-led companies that you've worked for. And that's why I showed you that very first slide where I was featured in all these things. Those are the types of things that are leadership type uh, examples. Then you've got some options. You've got four options, but you only need to um, choose two. So at least you've got some choice in the matter. Uh, you can choose um, that you can show innovation. So three examples of innovation, or that if you've done any volunteer work that advances the tech sector, you can show three examples of that. And I chose this one. Um, you can also show that in your work, you've made any commercial, technical or entrepreneurial impact. So you need three examples of that. And also if you've gone down the academic route and you've worked with universities or you've got some research publications, you can choose that. So for me, I chose leadership. And this is when the criteria was a bit different. I chose leadership, I chose innovation, I chose volunteer work, and I also chose the academic contributions. But now that they've changed the guidelines a bit, you only need to choose leadership 
and two out of four of these. Okay. So these are some of the common questions I do get asked when I help clients. It's first of all, am I eligible? How do I present my documents? Because that's a big one. What is relevant information? Because a lot of people have lots of different uh, pieces of evidence and stories. What's relevant and what's not? What do I put in? Because you do have a strict three page limit as well. Um, who can be my experts? You know, you have, may have a lot of people up your sleeve, but who are the relevant experts because they have to fulfill the criteria as well. Um, how do I show my innovations or how do I show my impact um, or how do I show I'm an exceptional leader? So those are the types of questions a lot of people have. And then in particular, if you are unsuccessful, what should I do? Should I appeal or should I make a fresh application? And those are the things that I help with as well. And it's okay if you have these questions because everyone goes through this. Um, I did it. I did. I did it myself. I didn't sleep for three months, but it really helps to have someone to support you throughout this process because it is quite overwhelming, but take it one step at a time and you will get there in the end. Um, these are my different support packages. Um, first of all, I do discovery calls to test your eligibility. I've got online resources, which I've, you know, they're tried and tested templates because I've done this for, for over five years now. Um, I give strategy sessions, which gives you a roadmap of what your application could look like. I can also review your application before you submit because I get a lot of people who come to me who just submitted it and then I look at it after they've been unsuccessful and it's like I should have had a look at your application before you submit because I could I could see gaps. Um, I know what the assessors want. And then finally, my most popular package is my premium coaching package, where I help you from start to finish. It's an eight week full support and I help you with all 15 pieces of evidence. And this is where um, the most transformation that my clients go through because it, it's an eight week um, coaching package. So those are the ways that I can help you. But um, just email me if you need any help and I can go through with that with you. So quickly, my top tips are to start early. You've got to budget. You've got to look at how much time you have. You've got to plan. You've got to implement, you know, how do you present all your documents? And then you've got to submit and then think about if you do, um, if, you, if you are unsuccessful, you have to think of the time it takes to appeal as well. Um, also have your application checked before you submit, even if it's, to, you know, if you can't afford um, someone to look at it, get someone else to look at it and see if it makes sense to them because it's a sense check as well. Um, this is all about your network, this process, because um, you need to get the support letters from people within your network to, to vouch for you, to validate and to confirm your innovations, your impact and your leadership as well. So for me, you know, my network was my net worth. I spent so much time building my network in the UK and it paid off because they supported my application. This process is all about self-promotion. So you have to not be shy about saying what you did. I did this. I did that. I led the company to do this um, because this application is about you. It's not about the team. Uh, so try and pick out the bits that you've done and highlight and highlight your achievements. And it's, it's a way for you to say what you did um, and exercise that muscle of I did this and I achieved that. Um, also prepare to put in the hard work. As I said, it's not easy, but if you put in the hard work, it will pay off. Um, the bigger the reward, which is a visa, the bigger the investment required by you. And that's why there's a 54% success rate or endorsement rate. If it was easy, everyone would get it, right? So um, it's not for the faint hearted, but if you really want this, if this is your goal, you will work hard and you will do it. And fingers crossed you will succeed. So these are just some of my clients from Nigeria. I know there's a lot of people from Nigeria here. Um, Jada Zola um, was endorsed with Exceptional Talent last year, and she's now in London. Uh, she's a fintech entrepreneur with a product and business operations background. She says that UK global talent visa means freedom and access to global opportunities. She really can't put a price on the freedom to work in the UK without sponsorship or ease of starting a global tech business. And she says it's totally worth it. And she's so happy. Every time I speak to her, she's always got a big smile on her face. Um, I've got also... Aziz as well. Um, I've interviewed these two um, on my YouTube channel. Aziz is a senior data scientist and entrepreneur. Um, he applied the first time, was unsuccessful, and then came to me to seek my help. He received the um, Global Talent Visa only just a few months ago uh, in June, and his top tips are to not rush it, 
do volunteer work to give back to your community, reach out to your network because they are very important. Take the risk and apply if you're eligible and speak to me as well. So that's lovely. And you can watch um, their videos on my YouTube channel. But today we have Chinadu, which has um, been so nice to share his story. And welcome, Chinadu. Hi, Michelle. Oh, Thanks so lovely to me. see you. Yes, I'm just going to change that. Great. Um, yeah, so now that you've seen that, does it does it bring back memories of what I've just described? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, yeah a whole um, lot of memories, right? Yeah. Memories. Yeah, you've been on a massive journey. Um, and I'd like to, before we go through and ask and me to answer, ask some of your, the questions, could you please give everyone uh, your background and uh, yeah, what do you do in the tech sector? What amazing things you've done in the tech sector. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a solution architect, so infrastructure solution architect. I have had 12 years of experience working for product-led GD2 technology company. <laughs> I have to emphasize. <laughs> yes, <this>. thank you. <laughs> yeah, so basically, what I do is to um, I build um, if, um, digital infrastructure. Now, this digital infrastructure are used by different clients, right? Oil and gas, telco, um, banking customers. Um, so they they innovate on this infrastructure. So running. Um, trends, whether it's um, um, big data, virtualization, different in, um, technology trends they, they are able to do on this infrastructure. Um, aside that, aside building infrastructure, I also um, do a lot of technical presentations uh, to customers and uh, my business partners. Um, I basically train the partners because I can't be everywhere. So what we have, we have a pool of partners, a community of partners. So what I do is to train the partners and they also help um, push the, this, this product, right? But that's, that's it on the side of what I do in terms of my day-to-day -day job. Outside my day-to-day -day job, I'm a tech writer. Um, I write some um, articles. I have a couple of um, um, thought leadership articles and articles on technology trends of what's happening or where I see technology um, and these articles have been published in some top newspapers and some technology blogs right and um, I'm also passionate about um, community development right and um, community develop development with specific interest in um, digital technology training for kids Right, so I, 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 I work with some foundations and I've personally gone, just taken the bull by the horn and gone to do some community training development um, and by myself. And lastly, I'm also a technology advocate. I love to preach out or, or send the, uh, talk about technology. Right, whether it's it's old or whether it's new or whether it's emerging, I I really um, do a lot of research. So I love I love to have a forum where I, I talk about these technologies. Yeah. Oh, and so. and you can see you're so passionate about your job, but also the the added extras that you um, do for the community and for the tech sector. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so. What made you decide to apply for the visa? Okay, interesting because Michelle, um, in 2018, I actually stumbled across the, the technician visa, right? Um, a couple of um, agency probably were doing marketing that sent me a, um, a LinkedIn message. Oh, your profile is good, you're fit for this, right? So I looked at it, I looked at the guide Honestly, the guide, the first glance at the technician visa guide, it, it was it was intimidated. So I just treat treat aside, right? Um, fast forward to twenty twenty, um, I I got to know of someone, a colleague who now got the visa. I'm like, okay, maybe I should have a second look at this, <laughs> right? And yeah. 
uh, I did. It, it was still intimidating, but um, knowing that I know someone that has the visa or went through the process, it kept me going. Like, okay, let me just let me just try. What could happen? Yeah. That was good. So that was two years ago that you you knew about it. Yeah, yeah, that was two years ago. Yeah, that's good. It, it takes that. Sometimes it takes that long, like just just to plant the seed, and then when you're ready, you can come back to it. And it, it had changed a lot. Like it keeps changing every year. Mm -hmm. um, so, what challenges and hesitations did you have? I know that you said it was overwhelming when you first saw it, but then when you actually decided to apply, did you have the same hesitations? Well. Um, okay, so from a hesitation perspective, yeah, um, for the fact that, yes, I knew someone, it was a bit comforting, yeah, okay, and I can go to this person, but hey, everyone is busy, that's the truth, mm -hmm. right, so having someone that can, that's ready to look at your 10 documents, your three reference later, I mean, it, it wasn't that easy. I, I didn't have that person, even though I knew someone, the person was busy. Um, so, it, it, but still, I, I still had to still um, push myself, right? Um, every time I go through the guide, right? And each time I go through the guide, it became less intimidating, mm -hmm. right? Um, but another challenge I had was, okay, we go about doing our daily tasks, right? We don't have it in mind that oh one day we're going to need this show this as an evidence so we don't document right so uh i remember while working with you you tell me you need to google yourself search <laughs> google <Yeah>. yourself so. <laughs> that was a really good process yes yes yeah. interesting there were a whole lot of information <laughs> that i saw that i forgot actually that I actually did this right so having to uh, bring all the documents, search everything. I mean, it was really challenging, but yes. Yeah, it, it was how to get the documents together, I think yeah, was the yeah. challenge. And yeah, you're yes. right. It's You yeah. go about your day-to-day -day tasks, you just do it, move on. And this exactly. process forces you. Yeah. To, You've got everything to... now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So who did we decide your experts were going to be? Because I know you took the bespoke coaching package, so that's why we're going through this process of asking, who did we decide your experts? Yeah, so yeah. I had three experts. Uh, number one was, uh, was a co it was a co uh, ex-colleague, Ton Friend. Um, he's into, um, he's the head of AI for a top uh, product-led company. And um, so he knows me right from as far back as um, 20, uh, 11. Um, so he's really an expert in his field. A second expert is um, a colleague, um, an ex colleague, right? So, but beyond her day to day job, she also um, has she has a foundation where she trains kids. And she's also a, a recipient of the Global Talent Visa. Um, um, so I, I, I just need to highlight it. So when people say expert, most times people feel um, the person needs to have. 550 years experience yeah not really i mean you you could have five years 10 years experience but still have done a lot right in in the, in the field and lastly um a ted expert uh, was a sales a, a sales um is into sales but technical sales um he was i mean he hired me on my first job in 2009 and since 2009 till date we are still we are still friends. Interestingly, his wife and I we share the same birthday date and month, mm -hmm. so we always keep in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were all senior. They all did. Yeah. they worked, but they also um, added value to the tech uh, community as well. I yeah. mean, these are people that you Google, you can always see something about them. Yeah, yeah. We went through that process too. We googled your experts, and it's a good thing to do because you know yeah. you, you need to establish their credibility and expert status. Um, okay, so so I went through the five criteria that you had to choose. Um, so which ones did we end up choosing for you? All those, you know, the leadership you have to choose leadership. Yeah, so le leadership um, compulsory. I mean, if you're going for talent or promise, everybody has to go through the leadership. So I chose leadership, and um, for the leadership, I. Some of the evidence I, I provided were um, 
um, pay slip. I, I, I did show my pay slip, but I mean, I mean, if you go with Michelle, she'll tell you it's not just enough showing your pay slip, right? I mean, you have to prove why um, you feel because the guy says high salary. So you have to prove that what you earn is actually high salary. Um, so I showed that. Um, I also did show, um, I do a lot of public speaking, um, but um, in this case, it wasn't my day-to-day -day job. This was uh, me talking in a high-profile event, invited to talk in a high-profile event. And um, all the evident was, yeah, my article. Yeah, I had some articles which I, which I used, yeah. Um, so that's for the leadership. For the um, optional criteria, I went with optional criteria two and optional criteria three. So for the optional criteria two, which uh, it's about showing um, advancement in the digital sector, things you do outside of your job, your day-to-day -day job. And for that, um, I, I had um, one or two evidence I submitted was a, I showed the, the, the mentoring for the foundation I do for the kids. And interestingly, um, why I wasn't doing this, um, the application, um, at that point, point the, the, the guide hasn't changed. So at that point, you could just submit a letter, right? <clears throat> but while working with Michelle, Michelle, for her, a letter wasn't enough, even though the guide says the letter is fine. She said, no, Chinedu, we need to show pictures, we need to get. And um, after I submitted, I got it. I think the last review they did, they had not, they now included that getting a reference later is not is not enough so she's more like michelle like ahead of the game she knows <laughs> like, she makes your application really really tight right so i had that letter and also the pictures then i um other reference was i i do a lot of um there's a school which i teach the, the kids and um uh, basically uh, my area where I grew up from. So for me, it was a, it's all about giving back to my community. So I go back to train them during their career learning program. Yeah, so I got a letter and I have a couple of pictures that I showed. Then for the optional criteria three, which is impact. So you have to show whether it's commercial or technical. Um, because of my experience, I was able to show both commercial and technical. And I work with customers and partners. So my evidence for my impact were letters from customers, letters from partners, where they clearly stated how their business was before I got, I started engaging with them and how I grew their business, the number of um, technical staff they had trained. And so there was before and after, yeah, you know, my impact evidence. Makes me so proud to hear you say everything because um, you're very it, well in tuned and understand the guidelines so well now. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I know it has changed. <laughs> it changes all the time, yeah. but that's, that's really nice. Yeah, thank you. And now let's talk about this part, which we haven't discussed, is that you applied twice. Um, yes. What were the difference between your first application that you did and then the second one that we eventually submitted? Okay, so okay, I, I still have my first application. I look at it and I just want to cover my eyes, right? Because it was terrible. It took me a week to submit the first application. And I mean, with all honesty, I think I just, I, I focused about my job right and um there were so many gray areas like i left open so i submit a, a an evidence for example pay slip i just write this is my pay slip <laughs> that's it yeah. right no explanation no context um i'm just submitting evidence and in my mind the assessor should know this is right i mean so there's a whole lot of room for assumptions right which it's not good right so it, it, the first application had that there was no 
story. I just have too many evidence flying here and there, right? And um, it came out unsuccessful, right? I mean, it's a terrible feeling, honestly, once you get that letter, rejection is really a terrible feeling. But um, in my quest to, to, because I had a vision, I knew I, I, I had what it takes to meet all those criteria. Um, but you getting the, the report from the assessor, I knew it was just around how I presented my evidence, right? And um, meeting Michelle, you, you really gave me, put my application a different, a different look, a total, I know th there's this makeover show whereby <laughs> that comes up yearly. You give <laughs> my application a new makeover. Like my CV I submitted, I still use, I, I, adopt, I, have, I, I have adopted that CV to use to, I mean, if I'm going to apply a job, I use it. Like it's, my final application with you was, was clear. Um, we had all the evidence, we had a story. There was no room for, to assume. Like, I, I write something and I mean, I gave it to Michelle and I was like, um, how does he know this? How does, I mean, you need, yeah. to, explain. <laughs> you need to explain, like, you don't, there was no room for any assumption. It was really clear straight to the point and there was a story i mean the story was in my personal statement later which was a summary of uh, my whole application it's like when i read through the personal letter i wrote previously and the one i i got the endorsement i'm like wow like i enjoy reading the one i used to get the endorsement like <laughs> like, <laughs> like so yeah um that that was it there's huge difference huge difference right Oh. And that's really good to see because I remember going through your first application and I asked so many questions because there were so many gaps. And yeah. I think I saw your, the realisation when you said, yeah, now I understand why I didn't get it. So we yeah. can try again and let's let's put forward a strong application. Yeah. Um, and, and it worked, you know. I, I think going again, having the courage to go again when you've been unsuccessful the first time, that speaks volumes. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people, like you said, um, we discussed this before, is you could get the rejection letter and just and just not go back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm so pleased. And I'm so pleased I could help you. You could see the difference. And I think for me, it's about a transformation process. Like you say, it's a makeover. <laughs> it's a transformation process that you've gone through. Definitely. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, yeah. just just to say it, it goes beyond the technician application, right? I mean, I, I've learned, actually learned a whole lot from the whole process. Um, if I'm doing a visa application, like I make it very detailed, like there's no need trying to make assumptions, say, okay, they should know, okay, I work for, for example, Zoom, everybody knows Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. The assessor should know what Zoom is. No, nothing stops you from just writing a two line or a two sentence what Zoom is and what yeah. they do, right? Yeah. So that's it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm so glad you got that because people, a lot of people miss that in their CV. They, they put the name of their company and then just what their role is. But for me, it's like, okay, what, what does that company do? Where is it based? Is it global? Exactly. Um, it, like, just give me a summary about it. So we just kind of get the gist of it quickly. Yeah. And that's only a one, one or two liner. That's all you need. Yeah. yeah. Just to make it complete. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. I'm glad. So when did you submit your first application and then got the result? And when did you submit your second? Because I wanted to know the timings. Okay. Um, first application was sometime in May. Hmm. And, of, um, of this year. Of this year. Yeah. May yeah. 2021. And um, I got the response in two weeks. Wow. In two weeks, yeah, I, I got the response. Um, one evening, I was having having dinner. Next thing, I just said, check my email, and uh, I saw it, and um, I got this. I lost, I lost my appetite at that particular time. So, like I said, the feeling is really, it's, it's, it's really, it's, 
it's terrible feeling but yeah. that shouldn't discourage one yeah. yeah it didn't discourage me um i went ahead and this time around i i decided to seek for help and i think um that, that will be my one of my tips to the audience here i mean we are good at so many things right and there are some things where you actually need a second eye if i had that second eye to look at my my first application maybe it would have turned out better right but i didn't so the second application i applied um, um 10th of september that's the home office application then i submitted my documents to the, onto the technician website on the 14th of September. Then on the 4th, the glorious 4th of October, <laughs> <laughs> I got the, 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 the email that I've been endorsed. And so if you calculate, it's like two weeks, two one weeks. day. Yeah. yeah, but not up to three weeks. Yeah, so two oh, weeks. wow. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you emailed me. It was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I get so nervous every time my clients email me saying, Dear Michelle, I got endorsed. Or, oh. <laughs> so tell me, how did it feel the second time? Like, you know, I know that they give you this long letter. <laughs> yeah, of course. So I, I so I went, I mean, that particular day, I went about doing my day to day work, right? Um, so it was actually in the evening or in the afternoon, I was on a Zoom call, right, uh, with a customer, one of my colleagues, right, and um, I mean, good thing I wasn't the one speaking at that particular time. So I now decided to just check my my, my inbox, right? I saw the email it came in the morning, right, around nine, and so I didn't go through the details of my name and my number, because I gave you a unique number, I just went straight to the point, where he says endorsed or endorsed. <laughs> and I saw that I was endorsed. Mm -hmm. I quickly just turned off my video of the Zoom call, turned off the mic, and I was able to now celebrate, right? At that point, where, because it was, it was like, oh, finally. It was a whole lot of work, trust me. This, this application, it will, I mean, I now have met people who have done it and nobody, comes out saying, oh, I was okay. I mean, I just did it. It was simple. It stretches, you get stretched. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the time because you are, you're being assessed with a whole lot of great people around the world, right? So you need, your application needs to be strong. It has to be tight. Yeah. So the feeling was it was it was good. Like it was it was. I, I still go back to the adjustment data and I smile at it. Like I, just <laughs> <smile>. <laughs> right. I, I still have funny. mine too. It's it's in a file, and you do smile when you say because it's because what did you get? Did you got exceptional talent? Exceptional talent, yes. Exceptional talent, yes. Exceptional. It's a good feeling. Yes, it is. Yeah, but you have to put in the work. You, you yeah. have to put in the work. I mean, working with Michelle, weekends, weekdays, I mean, I had a time whereby the workload, because you also have your work you're doing, right? The workload was more because I had to back up for some people in the office. But I mean, for me, it was, I was determined. I had a vision. I knew uh, what I wanted. So yeah, I had to sweat it out. Yeah, and it, and it paid off. You worked yeah. really hard. Like you were, we finished actually, um, usually it's an eight week engagement because I know that you're also working, but we finished in like five weeks. Yeah, yeah, around five You want, yeah, so you every wanted week. it done. Yeah, yeah, every week, weekend, yeah, but it was good. It paid off, it paid off because it's an intense process and you will not forget this for the rest of your life, yeah. but yeah. it, you were able to submit in five weeks. That That's how I help is, I make you accountable. I yeah. I help you edit and make it right, and then ready to submit. Like it, it's it's a smooth process, but it is an intense process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so um, we're running out of time, but I still want to keep, and I'm, I'm going to keep talking because, you know, you, you just hearing you, your story, it's, it's really nice and it's quite nostalgic and it brings back good memories. I mean, at the time, we didn't know you were going to get endorsed because I don't guarantee endorsement, yeah. but I guarantee a strong application. But just hearing all this coming out the other side is really nice. So what's your top tips? Now that you've been through the process twice, um, yeah. what, what knowledge and insights do you have to impart with people who, who are gonna go through this process? Number one tip for me, Michelle, will be apply. I mean, you may be at the school, you're thinking, oh, do I, can I? I mean, the more you're thinking, remember the, the, the bar of the, the guide, so the requirement keeps increasing, they keep changing it, right? So the, 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 the requirement, the bar keeps, gets to, they keep raising the bar. So just apply, right? Um, number two, seek help, right? You need to have that extra person that can help you review your application, right? And it's better if that person has done the process so many times, like Michelle. I mean, um, I, I tell her, I mean, having this call, I tell her, I had the option of having other people review, but hey, if someone is telling me I have one candidate that I have done and was successful as against someone who has done for a multiple of candidates, right? And maybe not all of us were successful, but at least a good number of success. This, I mean, the person has more um, visibility in terms of what the assessor wants, why was this person rejected, this was how we are killed. So seek help and seek help from people like, um, like, like Michelle. And um, lastly, don't, don't be intimidated by the, the, the tech guy, really. It's, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. But I mean, with this, Michelle really broke everything down. Right, with a few, a few, a few slides, as she showed, right? So, um, yeah, that, that, that would be my tip. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. I actually thought you were going to say Michelle broke me. <laughs> I try not to break you, but yes, I do break everything down to make it um, um, manageable yep. because it, there's, there's a lot of information and my yeah. job is to let you tell your story um, and then where I come in is make sure you fulfill the criteria based on what you've told me. Because, yeah, yeah you've, got, you've got a bigger story. Yeah. But there's only 15 documents and three pages. And there's criteria. So I help you fulfill the criteria with, with the relevant pieces of information that you have. Yeah. And if it's not relevant, we put it in other places, in your, uh, yeah. in your application, in your CV, in, in letters. So yeah, my job is to make sure you fulfill the criteria and to articulate your story in the strongest way possible. And I'm yeah. glad I, I helped you do that. I'm so I'm so proud of you. And finally, what does the visa now mean, mean to you and, and your plans? Oh, it's, uh... <laughs> Michelle, this visa means, it means, freedom. It means like, you know, in the open sea, like, you know, really there's a whole lot of barriers, really when you are talking about um, mobility from country to country, there, there's restrictions. So you, you're talking about applying for a job in another country and next thing you get to a page where they ask you, are you eligible to work in this country? Right? And the truth is no, so yes, but you have the skills and everything, but that barrier. So with this visa, that layer is it's 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 out like so it, it's freedom it is it's it's improved or increased confidence because having that backing from a body that's um, that, that and a body like technician endorsing you I mean it's like validating your 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 work, right? Even if you you once feel, oh, I'm not good enough, but hey, someone is telling you you are good, right? I mean, so uh, it's a whole lot of freedom. And um, my plans, there's a whole lot of plans. Um, the plan is, I don't think we people we think about the plan, right? When doing this, <laughs> <laughs> you've got it. You've got it. What do you do now? <laughs> one step at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one yeah. step at a time. Yeah. Oh, I'm so pleased. It's just the possibilities are endless now for you. Yeah. And and for your family. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But with the visa, you can bring in your, your family. Oh, 
Definitely. I'm so I get goosebumps because I don't not only help you, but I, I also help your family. And that's what makes me feel really warm and fuzzy inside because, you know, you do this for you and your family. And, and, and I'm so glad that you chose me to be part of your journey. Um, and I do want to keep in touch and you have to keep me updated on, on what you're doing because I do. Yeah, I do. Sure. Yeah, I do want to know um, uh, to see how you progress and, and when you get your citizenship, if you want it. Um, I'm, I still don't have my passport because of COVID, but I will get my British passport soon. But um, yeah, it's really exciting. And thank you so much for sharing your journey. I'm, I, we could talk about this all day because, it, 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 as I said, it's a, such an intense process and you, yeah. and people who go through it understand, like, because I've been through it, I understand. And, and when I got my um, endorsement, I remember exactly how I felt. I remember where I was and, and yeah. it's just, it's nice to share it with other people that have been through the process as well. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Um, okay, so I'm going to have a look at the Q&A and some people have put their hand up and I'm sorry, it's gone a little bit over, but we'll see. Um, Daniel's asked, um, how will it take me to prepare my documents before starting the application? So this is preparation. How long will it take? It, well, it depends <laughs> if you've got the evidence. Yeah, it depends, yeah, it depends. Um... Um, some people have to wait two years, three years to prepare, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's something you have to gather, right? You you check. Um, for me, like I said, we go about doing our daily activities and sometimes, I mean, you now look at the, the requirement and based on the things you have been doing, you meet, right? Because some, you have to build over, over time, right? Yeah. You have to build. You just can't do it this month and submit. Uh, you, know, you have to build over the years. Yeah. yeah and and it's interesting because some of your articles you had already done before you even started this process like you found one that you'd done in 2018 and you forgot yes, yes. <laughs> yes. and even yeah. when i told you i had one you're like oh, what should i do post it publish it, publish it. <laughs> <laughs> where is it yeah so it depends so if and this is what i tell a lot of clients who who aren't ready yet because they don't have the evidence use the guidelines as a goal to work towards so you know what they need. So you will use the time to gather the right evidence. But um, in terms of when do you submit, you submit when you when you have the evidence in front of you. And Tech Nation are very attuned to those who are gathering and doing things for the purposes of the application. So if they see that you're speaking at events like um, a, a lot of events three months before you submit and it's all done right before you submit they know that you're doing it for the application but if you do it over a period of time then then that's what they want okay um if you get the visa which gives you access to the uk is it compulsory you have to move there uh yes i think because that's yeah. the whole purpose <laughs> yeah. you you, you yeah. have to so um once you get the visa you have you're given, um, I think before it's usually 60 days, but with COVID, they give you 90 days, mm. right? Before to enter into the UK, right? Okay. Uh, and then once you enter, but the beauty about the visa is once you enter in the UK, you can actually still step out and step in, yeah. right? But provided you don't spend more than six six months or 180 yeah. days, 180 days or six months, yeah, uh, yeah. outside of the UK, right? In a calendar year so if you if your talent means you have three years so in every year within that three years i shouldn't spend more than six months outside the uk yeah. yeah that's that's really good that's insightful because that's useful for when you apply for your indefinite leave to remain and this is what i had to do was I had to go back and think about all the places that i've traveled mm -hmm. um so yeah now this is something I need to tell you now that you've got your visa, you have to have an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> and note down all your travel for the next three years. <laughs> I had to go back to all my emails, my passports to calculate how many days I left the country. So yeah, definitely 180 days. Thank you for that. Um, is your study year or master's added towards your experience years? Not really, because oh, you're studying. No, not really. No, not yeah. really. Um, I mean, th there's a criteria, I think, optional criteria for as for academic, but I mean, that's even for PhD and all that. So I think it doesn't, it doesn't count, actually. It doesn't count. Yeah. So that academic contributions is mainly for, for when you're working with a university in terms of your research publication. Yes. So if it's part of your thesis, even then, um, so if it's published in a well-known 
um, publication, then yes, you would. But if it's just for your studies, then no, you can't include that, any evidence. Um, yeah, so some people need the visa for access to the opportunities, like you mentioned about work, but don't necessarily want to live there. But the purpose of the visa is to live there. Live there yeah, because yeah, they want you to add value to the UK tech sector um, and they want to compete you to help them compete globally in the world. Otherwise, there's yeah. no point. Yeah. Um, does the reference letters necessarily have to be from the people you've worked with in the same company together as colleagues? No, 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 not necessarily. I mean, people, people submit reference letters from people they have met. Maybe they met in conference and they know them, yeah. they became friends. So yeah, it doesn't have to be from your colleagues. No. Yeah. But they, but they do have to say how they met you. Yes, um, of course. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. and yeah. how do they know how you work? And usually it's it's from working together. But there are. Um, some other ways so for example I used um, my mentor who I met at a conference um, she ended up being my mentor but we never worked together but she was mentoring me over the years she also um, because she was so well known she invited me to speak at some of her events um, yeah. and yeah so that's how she knew how I worked because she invited me I spoke at the event then she could judge me on that so um, yeah you need to give specific examples of why they think you are an exceptional talent or an exceptional promise. So give specific examples. Um, do you have to work in a tech company before you apply? Yeah, so they change the guidelines to specify that if you're from a technical, if you are, have a technical skill, you can work for a non-technical or technical organisation. But if you have a business skill, you have to work for a technical organisation. I hope that makes sense there. Um, yeah, so um, Olu, you're asking not necessarily from the same country. Yeah, so you can have you can have people from different countries as your experts, exactly. definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, can the letters of reference be from former colleagues who are now working in different companies? Yep. Yes, so long as they fulfil the expert status. Yeah, um, yes, credibility. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, this process is not about judging you as an applicant. They also judge you as judge your experts Excellent. to make sure they are experts as well. Yeah, that's why your experts need to have that credibility, the status. They need to be Googleable, <laughs> um, and they need to provide their CVs. Or you obviously yeah. have to submit their CVs as well. Um, yeah. So I, I hope. Um, I think we are a bit over, so I'm going to have to finish it up. If anyone hasn't got any more questions, um, I do have my discovery call, so you can book that through my website. They are fully booked. Um, they get book booked up pretty quickly, so please do book up as soon as you can. Uh, I am taking a break over Christmas. Uh, I know I'm saying the, the Christmas word. I know it's not far, but time will go really quickly. Um, it's, it's only next month. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Kinadu. I hope you enjoyed sharing your story with all these people that come to see you and and do you recognize any names <laughs> well some familiar names sure oh, <laughs> good. Names. yeah thanks please please do send um chinna do your congratulations it's really nice to read so if you want to give him a shout out and say congratulations please do because it is really nice to read afterwards um so yeah that would be really nice to do so yeah thank you so much chinna do it's, it's thanks thanks michelle and thanks for all you do right thanks oh. I'm so proud of you. Um, okay, well, best of luck with everything. And I know we're going to keep in touch. And thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, bye. everyone. Bye.